Chapter 1, Halcyon Days No, 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 this wasn't meant to happen. The inventor stared down at what he had created, feeling no sense of accomplishment, only regret. Where had his life's work gone so wrong? And more importantly, could he find a way to fix his terrible mistake? For as long as he could remember, Sai had always loved building things, toys in particular. Day and night he would toil in his workshop, dreaming up new playthings and bringing them into the world with his own two hands. People thought he was eccentric, to put it kindly, and kept their distance. At least the adults did. For the children of the town, going to the park and playing with Sai's toys was a rare pleasure. It was always surprising them with new creations, and wondering what he would come up with next could be just as fun as seeing the final product. Sai, Sai, what are you making now? Martha tugged at Sai's sleeve, stretching up on tiptoes to see over the top of his workbench. Well, if it works out, these shoes will let you slide around like you're on ice, wherever you go. Wow, that's so cool! Hey, can you make them leave behind like a colory trail in the ground too? And, and... The little girl bounced around the room, shouting out new ideas as they came to her. She was Sai's biggest fan, and, in spite of the difference in their ages, also his best friend. If Sai was developing a new toy, you could bet Martha would be there too, offering advice or just watching him work. Is watching me really that much fun? He'd asked her once. Well, yeah, she replied. You always look so happy when you're making things, so that makes me happy too. Sai was on his way to the park to show off his latest inventions. He never took money from the children. Seeing their faces light up with joy was reward enough for him. He stumbled through the city streets, holding a pile of toys against his chest and doing his best not to knock into anyone. Sai! Sai! Sai came to a stop and looked around. Was that Martha calling him? Yes, it had to be. Even in a crowd of people like this, he'd know her voice anywhere. He'd arranged to meet her at the park like always. So why was she here? Sai scanned the oncoming sea of people for signs of his friend. Had the streets always been this crowded? There were other voices now. People yelling, run and get out of the way. Finally, Sai caught sight of Martha and in the same moment realized what was going on. He ran toward her, the toys he'd been carrying clattering carelessly to the ground. Martha, over here, quick! She reached out a hand to him, but it was too late. As the runaway horse-drawn carriage tore through the crowd, everything became a cacophony of crashing, crunching, and screaming. And then, nothing. The rain came down hard, soaking Sai's hair and mingling with the tears running down his face. He ignored it and continued to gaze at the tiny grave. Don't you want to play with me anymore, Martha? There was no answer. Please play with me. Try out my toys like you used to. Tell me how to make them better. How to make them more fun. The tears wouldn't stop coming, but Sai barely even noticed them anymore. Wait for me. I'll make something new. Something you can play with even the way you are now. It'll be fun. So just wait for me. Chapter 2. At Any Cost Over the next two years, Sai made countless trips to the cemetery. Every time, he'd lay toys on Martha's grave, and the graves of other children, hoping for a chance to see them laugh and play again as they had in life. It's only polite to share, right, Martha? These kids don't seem to like my toys so much, though. <sighs> what am I doing wrong? Day after day... Sai would speak to the empty air in front of the little gravestone. One day, he was sure, he'd come back to find that the toys had moved or disappeared, that he was getting through to his old friend. But that day never came. Maybe it's the materials I'm using. Is that why you can't touch these? Huh. If we think about it that way, then... His head alive with new ideas, Sai left the toys and shuffled back to his workshop to try something new. Time marched onward, and the young toy maker continued to place offerings at the grave, to no avail. Then, one evening, as the sun was going down, 
something occurred to him, an idea very different from his usual way of thinking. If I could only find a way to give you a body again, you could play with these just fine. Why hadn't he thought of that before? Finally, he had a direction to take his research. Thirty long years went by. Sai worked like a man possessed, barely eating or sleeping. His workshop deteriorated into a grimy, chaotic mess. His body became thin and emaciated, but he worked on, chasing after every last scrap of arcane knowledge he could find. He was determined to see Martha again, no matter the cost. It was a cold, crisp morning as Sai walked along the all-too-familiar path to Martha's grave, a complex mess of steel and wires held under his arm. This was the result of his labors, a device that could, in theory, be used to give a spirit physical form. He switched it on, and it began to emit a strange noise. It started as a low-pitched drone, but gradually got higher and higher, penetrating through the air, through stone buildings, even through living flesh. It was as if the whole of reality was being strained to its breaking point. The machine stopped, and Sai looked around him. He didn't see Martha anywhere. Did it work? Something in the air did feel different. Picking up his device, Sai skulked away to investigate. Even before he reached town, it was obvious that all was not well. It was too quiet. Even at this time of day, there should be crowds of people bustling around, as they made their way to work. Sure enough, the streets were full of people now, but every last one of them had fallen to the ground. They lay there motionless, as if the life had been drained out of them, leaving only empty husks. What? What is this? I was trying to convert souls into physical matter, not... not this. So why? Sai felt his knees begin to buckle as he began to realize the full horror of what he had done. He ran throughout the town, desperate to find another living human. There had to be somebody out there besides him. No, 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 this is all wrong! This wasn't meant to happen! Sai sank to his knees as despair gripped his heart. They were all gone. He'd spent his life trying to make contact with the dead, and now he was the only living man left. Chapter 3. Farewell All Sai had wanted was to see Martha again, to make toys for his old friend and see her smile again. How had such a simple desire led him to commit this atrocity against the laws of nature? The device felt heavy in his hands, but he kept hold of it all the same. Where did I go wrong? How can I possibly make up for this? Somebody. Please, somebody tell me what to do. For a moment, it felt like something had brushed Sai's shoulder. It was probably just his imagination. He was so desperate for human contact, his mind was playing tricks on him, but he couldn't help looking all the same. Nobody there. <laughs> of course not. I'm all alone. The street was deathly silent, without so much as a breeze to disturb the fallen leaves on the ground. Sai smirked ashamed of his own foolishness. How could he have let himself get his hopes up like that? Aw, I finally got to see you smile again, but you don't look happy at all. Sai knew that voice. He'd know it anywhere. He'd spent most of his life wishing he could hear it again. Martha, it, is that you? Please, if you're here, show yourself. Talk to me, Martha. He didn't care if it was real or a hallucination anymore. If Martha was here, there was hope. Sai broke into a run, scrambling through the streets, but there was no sign of Martha. Only her voice remained. You've been crying for such a long time, Sai. I thought you'd have found something to smile about by now. Uh, I'm not crying. Why would I be sad? It's not like you're gone. We'll see each other again someday, so... Even as he spoke, Sai realized he was wrong. His cheeks were wet with tears. How long had he been crying? Had he ever stopped since the day Martha was killed? No. Deep down, I always knew that you were gone. That you weren't coming back. He tried to deny this. Buried himself in his work to avoid thinking about it. 
but there was no more hiding from the truth. I used to love making toys. I loved seeing the kids in the park play with them, but it was having my best friend alongside me that made it all worthwhile. I couldn't accept that you were really gone, Martha, that you were really dead. The words came spilling out, and Sai became aware of a bright light that hadn't been there before. It was so dazzling he had to shield his eyes against it. All the long hours in his workshop over the last thirty years had made him indifferent to things like weather and natural light. Now, a long-forgotten sensation was beginning to stir in his mind. He remembered what it was like to walk with warm sunshine kissing his skin. Sai fell to his knees. When he opened his eyes, he found himself face to face with his old friend. I'm sad we won't get to play together anymore, too. But so long as you can move on and keep living your life, I'll be right there with you. A smile finally broke through Sai's tears. A genuine one this time. One that made him look much more like his old self again. I have to move on, don't I? Oh, Martha. I must have made you so sad all this time. Right. That machine you made is cool and all, but it's just not you. You always seemed happier when you were making toys. I guess you're right. When I try to make anything else, it always goes wrong. They stayed like that for some time, chatting and catching up as if nothing had changed. In the midst of that cold, empty world, there were still two souls with warmth in their hearts. It was like a dream come true. But during a break in their conversation, Sai realized how quiet the rest of the town was. It was time for the dream to end. I have to go, before everyone comes back. I told Adios that you're not a bad person, and you didn't mean to do this. She said she'd forgive you, if you can let me go. Martha took a step backwards. Goodbye, Sai. I'm really happy I got to be friends with you, and I like you better when you smile. Sai took a deep breath and rose to his feet. He had to do this right. Tears were streaming down his face, but he kept his voice steady. Thank you, Martha. I'm so glad I got to see you again. And don't worry, I won't let you down. I'll live a good life. I'll make you proud. Two words from him, and the miracle that he'd worked so hard to achieve would be over. Part of him wanted to keep hiding from the truth to make this moment last forever. But that temptation soon passed. He knew what he had to do, and he'd see off his old friend with the brightest smile he could muster. He wanted Martha to remember him like this. Goodbye, Martha. The girl was already starting to fade from view, as if melting into the sunlight. She kept waving the whole time, until finally, she was gone. Sai became dimly aware of a strange sound, a low-pitched drone that was gradually getting higher and higher. The world seemed to change in the blink of an eye. The town was once more teeming with life, the people on their feet again and going about their business like nothing had happened. Sai walked through the streets in a daze. Perhaps it was instinct or nostalgia or Adios guidance that led him to the park. Children gathered around him, looking at the strange machine under his arm. Hey, mister, what's that thing? What's it for? How does it work? Sai smiled. He knelt down and started tearing apart his invention, rearranging the components into something completely different. Ta-da! It's a butterfly. It uses orbital energy and the wind to fly. Wow, cool! I want one too! Let's have a race and see who's can fly the farthest! Sai worked quickly, and in a few minutes, the sky was alive with dancing butterflies and the laughter of children. <laughs>